Hello, welcome to my brief tutorial on cracking open a Dell Inspiron lithium ion battery. This is an original Dell Inspiron lithium ion battery. Uh, note the hazards do not disassemble incinerate or expose to high temperatures and refer to instruction manual. Well, I didn't get one. And there's also a warranty sticker here. There's nothing under there. I tried to remove it. I thought there might be a screw under it, but there's nothing under there. Doesn't matter anyway because it's out of warranty. On this side, we have the rubber foot and on this side the battery meter if I press that you can see that it lights up to show a full charge however although it's got a full charge on it it doesn't keep the charge because it's an old battery a large amount of force is required to separate the two halves of the battery and now once you've done that you have the terminals at the bottom it's not very easy to see in this light is it there you go the terminals here what you need to do is very very carefully take out all nine of these cells and replace them with with the cells from a replacement battery and you have to take extreme care because uh, I'm guessing anyway that there's quite a lot of foil in here and um, that the chances of perforating that foil and causing a short circuit are probably quite high depending on how you attack it in quotes um, so I advise not using a kitchen knife to um, to do this, but use something made of plastic to uh, lever out these these batteries, which I should just say are, as you can see, marked CGR18650 CG lithium iron, and then under that MH12210, and they are all positive side to the left. I have now removed the cell from the holder. So here we have the side with the battery meter on it. There is a lot of glue used to keep these cells in. Doesn't seem to be anything else other than that. So here's what you have. Nine cells. And there are the plastic fins. Taking a look at the replacement battery pack, it's very similar. It has two boards, and I am trying to move the light. Here you go. The bottom board here has the so-called fins on it, I call it the plastic fins with the contacts in it, and notice that corrosion on the board. And then you've got the contacts here, which lead to the left-hand board, which has a similar designation. And I have drawn a primitive diagram here explaining how this is connected. We have a battery consisting of three cells, each of which is approximately 4.1 volts as measured, although it says 4.2 volt on the battery. Sorry, I mean on the cell. <laughs> to replace the batteries, what you have to do is, first of all, disconnect the negative terminal at the end of the battery pack. On here, this is on this second board and it is marked VO. Right, next we have to disconnect a few wires from the replacement battery pack because we're going to be discarding the PCBs and replacing this with the original PCBs. So along here, these are positive on the left and negative on the right. These three cells are in parallel, as are these and these. So they're they're like three separate batteries, each of which is, I think, 4.1 volts. So in total that makes 12.3 volts, approximately. Now I've made a lot of mistakes with this video so far, but fortunately you won't see any of those. <laughs> so <laughs> just trying to understand what's going on with this. Uh, we have a red wire linking these three cells on the left. This is the positive side. And on, the, on this PCB it is, mar it is marked 12 volts and I have disconnected that. The next one along, I'll just remove that tape, there. This blue line here is marked 8 volt on this first PCB here. And then the final wire, which is next to that, is white and is marked 4 volt on here. That white wire 
goes to the connection between the final battery here. And when I say battery, of course, I mean a pack of three cells in parallel. So there's the white wire. Really expertly done. So you have to disconnect this. That is your 4 volt. That is your 8 volt. And the red wire is 12. Here is another drawing to explain what I just said. On the left we have the positive terminals. On the right we have the negative terminals. There are three cells in each battery, all connected in parallel. Negative terminals to the right, so each battery is approximately 4.1 volts and connected together they make about 12.3 ish volts. Probably loaded that will go down to about 12 volts. And we have the following taps here. On the left a red wire marked 12 volts. The next one across is a blue wire which is marked 8 volts. This one is a white wire marked 4 volts. And finally, up here, the black wire, which is marked, well, on here it says, looks like VO, I think. So what I've got to do is now take these two PCBs out, discard them, and attach the original Dell PCBs, or battery controller. Here is a closer view of the replacement battery controller boards. Along the top on the right here we have the battery test switch. You can just about hear it clicking. And when you press it, it activates the voltage monitor. These are the LEDs here. You can see five of them. And you can now do whatever you want with this. Stick it in a spares box off environmentally friendly dispose of it. I should say dispose of it in an environmentally friendly way. I should apologize for my speech but the words come out backwards. Okay what I've done now is I've connected the replacement battery pack with the original boards. Here we have red positive, blue 8 volt, white 4 volt, and black, zero volt. Nothing's blown up so far, so I'm hoping that everything's okay. Eventually, you should end up with something like this when everything's been put back together again. Just a quick rotation. I used a bit of heat shrink wire on the, uh, sorry, heat shrink tubing, I should say, on the um, on the wire, and I have attempted to put the heat sensor back in a position where it can pick up the battery's uh, temperature, and um, all of the cables are attached, and we are ready to test it. This, the contacts here are very important camera doesn't show them up so well, but uh, getting those in a position where they fit the, the battery holder, that's quite important. I have made a really, really poor attempt at putting this thing back together because there were latches on here and clips and things and the whole thing was completely glued and as long as it, as long as you've got this these contacts on this side, as long as they are in the, the correct position, it should be alright. But one problem I had when I first tested this was that because I've opened it, when you take the battery out, the weight of the cells causes the whole thing to just come apart. And that is uh, not very safe, so I suggest you put some tape around it, which I didn't. This is what you end up with. Not a room full of junk, but this this battery here it is, 
and I have put tape on that side. I have put tape here. It didn't stick any on that side because it probably wouldn't fit. And I've put tape on the back here. Um, that's it. That's it. It probably won't fit, so you might need to trim a bit of this tape off, but just as long as the whole thing doesn't fall apart, uh, should be okay. A bit worried about that side. Didn't put any tape on there. 